Hello and welcome. My name's Gareth Grawk. I'm joined here today by Nicola Oliver, Chair of the IFOA Diabetes Working Party, to discuss the forthcoming diabetes mortality and morbidity risk research. This important research project is being commissioned by the IFOA's Actuarial Research Centre, by Pacific Life Re, Partner Re, Swiss Re, Legal in General and Zurich Insurance Group. Nicola, you're the chair of the Diabetes Working Party at the IFOA. It was the Working Party members who identified the need for new research on diabetes. Can you explain why you decided this new research was necessary? Thank you, Gareth. Yes, well, the way that uh, we realised that it was likely to need a wider uh, research project than we were capable of was that in the early stages of the Working Party, our remit really was to try and understand what are the risks to individuals with diabetes, both from a mortality perspective and from a morbidity. We know, of course, that people with diabetes, unfortunately, do develop some quite unpleasant complications that damage their heart, their kidneys, their eyes, etc. We started to do some research of our own, more like a systematic review of existing publications. It became evident quite early on that a lot of the data that's in the public domain is really out of date. So they're not taking into account some of the newer uh, medical treatments that have been developed over the last 10 or more years and that are now been in use for people with diabetes for quite a number of years. Some of these treatments have been shown, particularly in clinical trials, to really help people with diabetes keep their blood sugars nice and tightly controlled and it's keeping blood sugars controlled that prevents these complications arising. However, as I said, all the analysis and data that we could get our hands on publicly was relating to a, a time before those drugs were developed. So we knew that we needed to do something a bit more. So with a discussion within the group and with a wider IFOA executive, it became evident that we would require analysis of some current data sets, looking at the experience of people with diabetes now, and just in clinical trials, because of course, people who are in clinical trials generally are healthier, they don't have any other uh, uh, illnesses wrong with them, um, and what we want is some real world evidence. So that's why we have decided to commission this research, working with an academic partner that has access to uh, real world clinical data sets, so this is real people in the UK with diabetes. It's an excellent gold standard anonymized data set going to help us really understand the experience of today's person with diabetes. Brilliant. And who do you think this research will benefit the most? I think ultimately it's going to benefit the person with diabetes. And I say this for many reasons. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, first uh, thoughts that came to us when we set up the working party was how can we widen access to insurance products for people with diabetes based on the fact as I mentioned before that the current uh, medications that are offered to people with diabetes are much more effective they help individuals keep their blood sugars much more tightly controlled so less likely to to develop those uh, complications so why are we why are we underwriting all uh, people with diabetes with the same with the same uh, set of very narrow rules. So we're looking for some granularity in that. We know that there are some biomarkers that are now available which can tell us a lot about somebody with diabetes, how well they're controlled, etc. We know as well for the industry, this is going to be of a benefit. Improved knowledge of some of the medical conditions the insurance company deals with has to be a good thing. Um, and We've had some excellent feedback from one of our early academic advisors, a Professor Kamlish Kunti, and he works at the Diabetes Research Centre in Leicester, and he said this will be of great interest to clinicians because this is also uh, a first in terms of clinical research too. Excellent. And how is the research likely to be structured? Okay, so, the research will start from the beginning of May and the research partner will begin by, first of all, which is standard practice, doing their own literature review to make sure that they're not going to be repeating anything that's already been done. They are then going to analyse data of and compare the uh, experiences of those with diabetes and those without within this large general data set 
and start to look at which factors are driving mortality, which factors are driving morbidity. Is it simply the things that we already think about, such as age and weight, or are there wider factors that we should definitely be considering? And we already think that, there's, that, that that is what's going to be revealed, right down to the particular types of medications that uh, individuals are taking. Now, we won't have a full picture of mortality relative to the medications at this time, but we do know that Overall, people with diabetes are able to manage their conditions much better, and the support from clinicians to people with diabetes in the UK um, is improving all of the time. And how do you hope this project changes the way we think about diabetes? That's a very good question, Gareth. Uh, the way we think about diabetes is really sitting very historically in thinking that type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes equals a reduced life expectancy. And this doesn't have to be the case. For instance, um, other factors that can be taken into consideration, such as diet and physical activity, we know that these have a big impact on people with type 2 diabetes, well, type 1 as well. But overall, what this is going to tell us is that there is a large group of healthy, well-controlled people with diabetes who don't need to be thought of anymore as uh, 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 somebody who can't access insurance products and who has a very unhealthy lifestyle. So that's what we're hoping to see as well. And Nicola, final question from me. What, what is the impact your research is aiming to achieve? Mm -hmm. Well, we hope quite profound. Um, as I say, it will open up the insurance market for people with diabetes in, in a much wider way than it currently is. Uh, we also know that it's going to be of use to clinicians who can then look at the research and understand that actually there are certain factors that are driving the, the positive experiences of their, of their patients with diabetes, and it's not just about uh, what we historically understood. I mean, it's been, been very, very many decades since the first patient was injected with type 1 insulin. Uh, unseen for type 1 diabetes, excuse me. But it seems that, the, that, that, that we reached a sort of stasis for some years in the middle. And now we've made you know, some terrific leaps in, in understanding the condition, understanding that it's not just simply particularly type 2 diabetes, a problem with sedentary behaviour, etc. There may be some genetic implications. So deeper understanding of the, of the, of the long-term implications of being diabetic is what we hope to, to, hope to achieve. Nicola, thank you so much for joining me today on what looks to be uh, an incredibly important far-reaching programme of research. For those who are looking to track this programme, you can find all the details on the uh, Actuarial Research Centre, which can be found on the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website. Nicola, thank you so much for joining me today.